this is the house of bread and praise, the place of balance and abundance, where we believe Jesus feeds us and we give him praise for it. Kenaniah.
for his wondrous works. We thank him. He's been just too good for us to sit still. So here's your chance. Lift the praise.
Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we bless you. Hallelujah. Come on and bless the Lord on this morning. We thank you. God, we praise your name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can you put your hands together for Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we love you on this morning. We thank you for your power and your presence, God. Lord, you are so good. You are so wonderful. Lord, you are so awesome. Hallelujah. And there's nobody like you, God. On this morning, God, we want to thank you for your power, Lord. We thank you for your power, Lord. We thank you for your power, Lord. After the hallelujah, we thank you for power in the Holy Ghost, Lord. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon us. Hallelujah, Lord. We realize that we are new creatures, God. We pray that you would bless on this morning, Lord, that you would touch, that you would heal, that you would deliver, God. Somebody needs you in a special way on this morning, God. Touch that hearer, Lord. Touch that listener. Hallelujah, Lord. Touch the body. Touch the mind, God. Oh, Lord, give us clean hearts. Restore right spirit in us, oh, God. Lord, let this day, God, be the day, hallelujah, that change come in our lives. Oh, let the conviction of the Holy Ghost, God, uh, touch every area of our lives. Uh, oh, God, we come panting for you, Lord, uh, like the dead searches for the Lord. And we need you, God, in every aspect, Lord. Bless, touch, and have your way, God. Uh, as per our speaker on today, Lord, uh, Bless them, use them, keep them, Lord. Hallelujah. In the blessed name of Jesus. Oh, God, we come to give you all praise, all glory, and all honor. In the name of Jesus. Can we give the Lord our God praise? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are y'all glad to be here? Are y'all glad to be in the presence of the Lord? Hallelujah. 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 Okay. We're going to try this again. This is a simple song. You are Alpha and Omega. If you don't mind singing along with us, we would greatly appreciate it. I think the Lord would appreciate it too if you would sing unto him. Amen.
Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, it feels better in this place. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. All right, now we need y'all to give yeah, us some more yeah. high energy. Come on, that was just a warm up. I hope you had a good night's rest. I hope the week was kind to you. And if it wasn't, you're in the perfect place. Thank you for joining us on Facebook and YouTube.
the praise your God. Hallelujah. Come on, don't sit down. Keep praising him. Come on, you just drive me. Come on, come on. Come on, drive. Come on, keep clapping your hands. Give him the glory. Come on, do Psalm 150. Praise him in the sanctuary. That's what you're doing now. Praise him in the firmament of his power. The power of the Lord is here right now. Clap your hands and give him glory. Clap your hands and give him the praise. Come on, clap your hands and give him glory. Come on, just keep clapping. Come on. Come on, keep clapping. Come on. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Turn him with gladness. Come on, come on, come on. Give the Lord the glory. The more you praise him, the more you better you feel. Glory is being released into the atmosphere. As you clap, you're being healed. As we clap, you're getting delivered. Clap those hands and give him glory. Sometimes all you need is a memory. All you need is a memory. When you're going through something, all you need to remember is that the same God that brought you out the last time is the same God that'll bring you out this time. God is one thing. He is never changing. He's the same God then as the same God now. Whatever you need from God today, whatever you need from him this week, whatever you need from him in this moment, I decree and declare as you open up your mouth and as you clap your hands, God will work in your favor. I'm a witness. God will fix it for you in the praise. God will fix He'll shift it. When you don't see a way, God says, I got you. Hey, when all you can do is moan and cry, God will make a way for you. I came to tell you that today, God wants to shift your situation through your praise. My question to you is, what are you going to do? Are you going to sit there? Or are you going to do what the Bible said? It's with joy we draw water out of the wells of salvation. I dare you to praise him. I dare you to praise him. I dare you to rejoice. I dare you to praise him. I dare you to lift him up. I dare you to magnify him. While you're doing it, God is working in your favor. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. I know how it's my responsibility to, to move the service along. But in my soul, I feel like running around this church. God, 
has been so good to me and I know he's been good to you. Presence of the Lord is in the house on this morning. Feel the power of God. Presence of the Lord is here. Without you being pumped and primed, I just came in on a wave. I ain't got to pump and prime you. Presence of the Lord is here. If we ain't moved by the Spirit, I can't do it. Got enough power to do it. We're moved by the power of the Holy Ghost. Power of the Lord comes in and shifts and do what he want to do. Somebody just yell out, have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Do what you want to do. Do what you want to do. Do what you want to do, Holy Ghost. And you do what you got to do. If you feel like running, run. If you feel like clapping, clap. If you feel like crying, cry. Whatever you want to do, do it. Because God is going to work for you. God is going to shift your circumstances in the praise today. It's being shifted in the praise. It's being shifted in the praise. There's a wave in here right now. God is shifting it in the praise. I said he's shifting it in your praise. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds and whatever's got you bound whatever's got you locked up open up your mouth and decree and declare your victory let me hear you pray let me hear you magnify let me hear you give him glory come on church come on church of God in Christ open up your mouth and praise him
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I act like y'all want to still praise him. You're making your hands to do war. You know your hands is an instrument. And the louder you clap them, the more glory you release. The more noise you make, the more glory you release into the atmosphere. Let me hear you. Clap, 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 clap. to stop praising him. We honor the Lord on today. We honor the spirit of the Lord. I said we honor you spirit. I don't care what's going on. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what mistakes you've made. I don't care what bad choices. I don't care what it is. I don't care what scandal you found yourself in. I don't care whatever it is. Praise your weapon. I am my soul. I said praise is your weapon. Let all the people praise it. Let all the people praise it. Up and go into a worship. Come on, we got to move. Come on. But go into a worship real quick. Come on, just say something beautiful to him. Just tell him that you love him. Best thing we can tell him is just simply, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, this is a yes, Lord church. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let his glory settle on you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That praise were not, was not emotionalism. That was the glory of God. Let it settle on you. Just slip your hands up and tell the Lord, yes. Come on, you can take your seats if you want to, if you can. But while you're taking your seats, tell the Lord, yes. Just keep telling him, yes. Yes, Lord. 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 
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. 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 Now clap those hands in the sanctuary and give him glory. And we honor the Lord. And we honor the Lord. And we honor the Lord. We honor the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is here on this morning. We honor his presence. We honor our leader in his absence. Come on, don't do better than that. We honor Bishop Anthony W. Gilliard. Amen. We honor each and every one of you in your respective places. To the ministers and elders of the house, we honor you, your presence on this morning. To Elder Royce Griffin, our speaker of the hour, we honor him on today. We honor this man of God. Amen. We honor each and every one of you in your respective places, to our minstrels, amen, who are so dedicated and faithful, amen, to our church mother, amen. Mother Barcliffe is here. God bless you, darling. To all of our church mothers, we honor each and every one of you. You could have gone any other place. You could have stayed home and laid in the bed and watched uh, Meet the Press. You could have done anything you wanted. I watch the news. I watch Meet the Press. <laughs> I watch CNN. But... <laughs> That's probably what I would be watching if I was home. But I came to give him glory. Sometimes you have to come in the presence of the Lord. Sometimes it's easy to get up and come. And then a lot of times it's a push. But when you push yourself, how about Shoko? I said when you push yourself, amen, God just seems to drop another glory on you. Amen. We can't make it every time. Amen. But when we come, we ought to be intentional about our being here. Amen. Thank God for you. Amen. For letting the Lord have his way. Amen. We honor each and every one of you. There is a QR code that you should have received. I'm not going to explain the QR code that you received right now after we go off the air. I want to explain that to you. But will you mind scanning it? Then we'll return afterwards. So don't leave. Don't leave. We're going to get out on good time today. Scan your QR codes, and then we will discuss it later. Amen. Sister Barbara's going to come and discuss it later. <laughs> God bless you, sugar. Amen. Tell the Lord thank you. And we thank you. We honor the Lord. Amen. At this time, we're going to prepare for our tithe and offering. Amen. We want to, as we prepare, we want to be cognizant of the fact that next week is Tuesday night Bible study. Man, I believe our bishop will be here. If there is any type of change, you, of course, will be notified. As it stands now, we will have a Tuesday Night Keys to Life, all of your uh, rehearsals and whatnot. All of that is in place for next week. We don't have anything pressing, amen, no other announcements with respects to any events that will be taking place next week. So keep that, keep, keep checking social media. A lot of things are posted on the social media, amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And there's prayer. Amen. The uh, first of the month prayer. Amen. Which is on Facebook Live with our bishop. That will happen on Monday. Amen. 6 a.m. prayer. Amen. So we get up. We wash our face. And wash the crust out of our eyes. And, and get in prayer. <laughs> amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, amen. A dime of every dollar belongs to God. Amen. Our our deacons are coming, amen, with our offering, amen, amen. This is your week to sow your 10% of your tithe, amen. Let's be doing that, amen, and also giving an offering, amen. The deacons are coming at this time. The trustee's office is open. Trustee's office is open, amen. And the giving modalities are still up. We are still giving virtually. You can give via all of those giving modalities that are posted. I believe if we're live, God bless you to all of our viewers who are viewing us live through the streaming modalities, you, they're, they're, those uh, modalities of giving are being posted. Amen. 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 Can y'all play a little something as they give? Amen. Just something. Something while they're giving. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. After we give, the choir, the choir will be up, amen. And then after the choir, we will be prepared to hear the word of God from our very own Elder Royce Griffin. Let's give Elder Griffin a hand. 
Amen. He will be the next voice that you hear after the choir. Let's sit attentively, listen to the word of God that will be disseminated on today. How many of you came to be blessed on today? Amen. 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 Praise God. Everybody, please stand. Amen. As we just bless the offering. Father, we thank you. We give you glory and we give you honor. We bless those that gave out of their substance, those that gave willfully and liberally, those that gave easily and those that gave with struggle. We ask that you bless them, some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. We pray that you meet every need according to your riches in glory. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. At this time now, we're going to have from the greatest choir. I said the greatest choir. The TikTok choir. <laughs> Amen. It's coming at this time. Come on. The next voice after the choir will be Elder Royce Griffin.
Come on, let's open up our mouths. Come on, let's open up our mouths. Come on, open up your mouth. Come on, open your mouths. Come on, let's praise him. Come on, let's give him glory. He cut out of Mahosia. Holy under the Mahosia. He cut the Nebassia. Oh, Candidi, oh, Sia Tatabaha. We can no Sia Toto and a man. We can the Nidi, oh, Sia To. A so called Shatata. We can no Sia. We can no Sia. We can the Lala Mahosi. He called the Lala Bahaya. Oh, Shatata Tanabo. He called the Lala Bosikata. He called the Father, we give you praise today. 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 Father, we give you praise. Tatato. We give you praise today. Tataya. We give you praise today, Father. We give you thanks today. Father, we pray that you, for these next few moments, Father, I ask for a fresh anointing. Father, I pray that you will cause me to decrease and that you will increase. God, open up the ears and the hearts of your people and let us receive from you today. Father, we are not here for personality, but we are here to give you glory. Father, we are here to give you glory. Father, we are here to give you glory. Father, we're here to give you glory. Father, I pray that you will use me for your glory today. Allow us to hear your word. Allow us to experience your presence. Father, we want to walk out of here better than what we walked in. Father, I pray that you will lift the ears of the people that are watching. That you will lift those that are watching and in the sanctuary now. That you would be their strength, their keeper, and their deliverer. Father, we know that there is nothing too hard for you. Father, so before we walk out of here today, we ask for a life-changing experience. Father, we ask you that you would move by your glory. Father, we ask that you would prick the hearts of your people and say, Lord, I want to be saved again. Father, I want to be healed and delivered. Father, and we promise to give your name the glory. We promise to give your name the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. We say thank God and amen. Open your mouths, clap your hands, and give the Lord a praise. We bless the name of the Lord today. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run in and we find safety. We give God praise today for there is a, he's a wonderful God. He is an awesome wonder. God is a good God. Hallelujah. This morning, I had this song in my spirit. I'm just going to read the words. I'm not going to sing it. The song says, all my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath I am able, I will sing of the goodness of the Lord. How many are excited about what God is doing? Hallelujah. We honor the spirit of the Lord again. Let's clap our hands for God again. We thank God for our bishop. Let's praise God for the man of God. To all the ministers and elders and to our church mothers, thank God for my mom today. We praise God for her. I want to share a little thought, just a little thought. You all praying for me? All right. Job chapter number one, verse six. All my life you have been faithful. I'm going to sing it a little. All my life you have been so, 
so good with every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God one more time all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God now there was a day when the sons of God came presenting themselves before the Lord Satan the adversary the accuser came among them the Lord said to Satan where have you come from? And Satan answered the Lord, from roaming around the earth, walking around. Satan, and the Lord said to Satan, have you considered and reflected my servant Job? For there is none like him on earth. He is blameless and upright. One who fears God. One who has abstained and turned away from evil because he honors God. I just want to talk for a quick second. I have a few scriptures here, so I just want to talk for a quick second. The conversation. The conversation. You are the topic of discussion. You are, we are. The topic of discussion. One, many times we wonder why we are dealing with some of the things that we're dealing with. Many times we wonder, we get frustrated, and we try to figure it out. And a lot of times we want to blame the devil. But sometimes God is allowing things to take place for a few reasons. One, he wants to get the glory because he's a jealous God. Two, he wants to keep us humble. And three, he wants to show us how strong we really are. As we dive into the text, we, feel, we see here, we know it's a very familiar uh, book of passage where God and Satan was having a conversation about Job. And in this conversation that he was having about Job, God said to Job, did you consider someone who I put my hand on? Did you think about or did you wonder about or did you consider or did you even put a, a thought in your mind about this one particular person? Now, some have said that this was a bet between God and Satan. Some have said that this was an a, a unfair situation. But I really feel like God was just simply getting the glory out of everything. I want to encourage us before we walk out of here today that everything that we are dealing with right now, God is getting the glory. No matter how, mo how, much you may f how much it may feel, how much pain you may be in, how much struggles you may be dealing with, how many things that you may be going through right now, God is going to get the glory and the glory will be revealed. So as we go through chapter 1, chapter 1 talks about how Satan said, well, you have a hedge on him. You have a hedge on him. You're protecting him. And I promise you, if you take this hedge off, he's going to deny you. These are the conversations that God and Satan have on a daily basis about us. I promise you, if you take something away from them, they're going to disown you. They're going to turn on you. They're going to go to another religion. They're going to walk away. They're going to they give up on life. They're going to take their own life. They're going to do whatever it takes. They're going to walk away from you. So God said, hmm, okay, since you want to talk like that, all right, I'll take the hedge off of his house. Yeah. So I took the hedge over the house, and so when he took the hedge over the house, his, his, his cattle began to die, and things began to happen. His children got killed, and things began to get destroyed. And then we find in chapter, uh, uh, chapter number uh, 20 and 22, where he says, after all of this took place, Job said, he went into prayer, and then he had a moment of mourning for his children, and then he went to worship. How many know that when we get into the presence of God, 
there are some things that change no matter what we feel, no matter what we think. Things change when we make our way into the presence of God. When we make our way, no matter how it looks, when we make our journey into the presence of God, things change. Our even attitudes change about how we feel about the matter. Situations change. Our outlook changes when we get into the presence of God. So Job said, well, I'll go ahead and get into the presence of God. I'm sad. I'm going to mourn over my children, uh, but I'm going to get into the presence of God. It is the light of his presence that removes the sting of adversity. It is important to have a relationship with God. It is important to even have your time with God. God rebuked me a few weeks ago. He said, you don't spend enough time with me. You don't spend enough time with me. You can pray and all of that good stuff, but you don't spend enough time with me in prayer. I want intimate time with you so that when you start going through stuff, you don't have to question it because you already know I'm going to bring you out. So it is the light of his presence that removes the sting of adversity. So then we get into chapter 2. God and Satan has another conversation. He said, what are you still doing here? I already gave you part of Job. Why are you still here? God said, well, they, uh, Job, Satan said to Job, God, well, what I'm going to do is, um, you got his head, your hand over his body. Let me touch his body. So God said, all right, I'll remove the heads from the body. And I'll start allowing sickness to come. I'll start allowing ailments to come. I'll start allowing things to take place in his body. God said, I'm allowing these things to happen. This is what he said to me while I was in study. I was preparing for this, you know, a little while. You know, I had this in the back pocket, this message. And, and it talks about, he told me, he said, I'm having daily conversations with enemies about you, with the devil, with the devil about you. I'm having daily conversations about you. I'm having daily conversations about you because according to Jeremiah 29 and 11, he knew the thoughts and the plans that he has. Yeah. So he said, I'm just going to still have these conversations, but I know what's going to happen. All I need you to do is know what's going to happen. So after Job's body got afflicted, now we oftentimes preach against Sister Job. We oftentimes talk about bad about Sister Job. Because in verse 9 and 10 she says, his wife said, are you still maintaining your integrity? Curse God and die. He replied and said, foolish woman, shall we only accept the good from God and not trouble? That thing stuck out to me real good. Because we are real happy when God is doing great things for us. We are real happy when the job comes, when the house comes, when the bay and the boo comes. We're real happy when the money happens. We're real good there. But when we got to go through some trial and tribulation, we start like, God, I don't like you. Trust me, I had the conversation too. God, you're not fair. You're not my friend. You're not my friend today. I know the song says I am a friend of God, but today I'm not your friend. The last message our priest talked about, embrace your truth. Sometimes you got to be in the truth and you say, I don't like you today, God. I thank you for waking me up, but I don't like you today. She said, are you going to still maintain your integrity? So I said, we got to, when I was studying, it came to me, said, we got to, we got to give her a pass because she was looking at her husband suffer. But on the other hand, you never want to be with somebody that can't pray you through. I understand you have your moments. Ecclesiastes tell us there's a time and a season for everything. So you have your moments, but when you get to keep talking foolish, I'm going to have to dismiss you. Sometimes we got to dismiss people. Sometimes we got to dismiss family. Sometimes we got to let things go. Chapter number three. I'm going to talk through the text a little bit. Chapter number three. We saw Job's human side. He said, what I, have, what, has, what I feared has come upon me. What I dread has happened to me. I have no peace. I have no quietness. I have no rest. I ha but I only feel turmoil. Ecclesiastes 1 and 3 and 1 says, to everything there is a season. 
and a time to every purpose under the heaven. I need y'all to understand something today, and this is what the Lord shared with me. He said, everything that I do, there's a purpose behind it. I don't want you to think that I'm doing this just for fun. I'm doing this because there's a purpose behind it. I'm getting glory out of you. I chose to have a conversation about you, and I chose you to carry my glory. So we see the human side of Job. I want to encourage you all today, just, just hear this. We have that opportunity to express the human side. The Bible says that Jesus knew temptation on every side. So he knew us and he knew what we were going to experience on every side. So even in the Garden of Gethsemane, we saw the human side of Jesus when he asked his father to change his mind. So God is giving us that moment, that season, that box in time to have our pity party, our adult temper tantrum, our fussing match, our going off match, our crying match. He's giving us the opportunity. Oh, but what I love about God, he has a wonderful way of giving us a reality check. <laughs> Chapters 4 through 27. There was a conversation. Let's go back for just a moment. I want to put a pin here. When we gain friendships, relationships, and connections, we must consult God. We must consult God. Because when we look at these chapters, when we start reading in these chapters, we see how every piece of negative energy, every piece of negative word, his friends gave him all this kind of crazy stuff and said, hey, listen, you must have did something wrong. God don't punish good people. I know what, you, we, what we say you are. You're a wealthy man. You're a rich man. You had all of this good stuff. You was upright. You obeyed God. You did everything right. So what you do wrong, sir? You done lost your cattle, you done lost your children, you done lost your families, you done lost your health, your body is in, 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 in a disarray. What did you do? Then he had one of his friends that started acting as though he was speaking like God. Sometimes we gotta go, we have to not sometime, all the time. We gotta guard our ear gates. We cannot let everything come in our spirit. One of his friends started going down the list and said, God did this and God did that. And if God is this and if God is that. And if God, this is where we have to take into consideration now our relationships in the seasons to now and the seasons to come. Some people we just going to have to cut off. Some people we're going to just have to walk away. Some people we're going to just have to dismiss. Listen, I'm in a season of depression right now. I don't need you to add to it. What the old saying say, I can do bad all by myself. I could be depressed in my bed all by myself. No, I need somebody to call me and give me a word of encouragement. Because in this conversation that he was having between 4 and 27, he even started to question his own righteousness. Sometimes we will get to a place to where we start questioning what God said about us. Due to word, due to uh, uh, impartation, due to conversation, we'll start questioning what God, what we know God said. Job said, 13 and 15, though he slay me, even in my fear, even in my doubt, even in my uncertainty, I still will trust him. We have to evaluate our relationships a lot of times we choose people just because we don't want to be alone we choose friendships I'm not even talking about romantic love love relationships I'm just talking about friendships and connections we don't want to be by ourselves so we'll sit and hang out with people knowing good and well and ain't no we don't have no reason to be around them if you want to sit and gossip all day long, I need somebody to pray with me I need somebody to talk with me I need somebody to encourage me and then, because I'm, I'm, I'm open at this point, I'm ready to receive. So, when he started having these conversations, they just, well, all, all negative stuff. Mm -mm, I can't do the negative in this season. I can't do the, the, dis, the disagreements in this season. I can't do the consistent arguments in this season. I can't do the consistent messiness in this season. 
I got some place to go and I need some deliverance. I need some healing. I need a restoration. I don't have time for that. So we get into further on where God finally decided to talk to Job. Let me, let me just throw this in there real quick about the friendships and then we're going to go back. Bad advice can always cause you to disconnect yourself from your purpose. Bad advice has the potential to cause you to disconnect from your purpose. When you are not listening to the right people, you have the potential to go left. You have the potential to get caught up. I never didn't always think about the birds of the feather flock together. I didn't always think it was. But sometimes you have that potential. So be careful of our connections in this season. Some of us are going through right now. Some of us are struggling right now. Some of us are trying to figure out why. Some of us are trying to make sense of certain things. Some of us are trying to understand and, and keep our integrity and faith in God. Some of us are. And some of us just gave in. But it is. Chapter 42 was the conversation between God and Job. And God decided to bring a reality check to Job. I've been listening to a song for the last couple of weeks about calling Reminder. And it says, play back in my mind how you showed up every time. Keep on reminding that you're still providing for me. Sometimes we need to tell God, Lord, I need you to remind me of how you not just brought my mother out, but how you brought me out. I need you to remind me of how you healed me from certain matters. I need you to remind me of how you, I, I, I just, I need, I need a culture shock. I need, I need a shock. What is that thing? I, I don't know what it's called. What is the thing when the EMTs come and they try to, that, that thing right there. Sometimes you need that. Sometimes you need that shot to bring you back to life. And that's what God did with Job. He brought him back to life. He said, do you know who I am? Did I not put the sky in the, in the air? Did I not put the sun in the sky? Did I not put the stars in the air? Did I not put breath in your body? Do you know who I am? And you sitting here questioning me because I allowed something. I only allow it because I need you to know how strong you are. And I use you for glory. I only allowed it. The crazy part about the devil, God told him, you can't kill him. So the good part about this is, you ain't dying in this here. Death is not our portion in this matter. It's not. It's not the portion, no matter how many mistakes, no matter how many things you got caught up in, no matter how many situations that God opened, allowed to happen, you won't die here. I need you to be encouraged by that. You won't die here. You won't give up here. That's a place to give God praise. You won't die here. Romans 8 and 1, 8 and 18 says, For I reckon the suffering of this present time, it's not worthy to be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us. There's glory coming. 2 Corinthians 4 and 17. For our light afflictions are but for only a moment. They work it for us, for, through us to exceeding the weight of glory. There's glory coming through this. I don't care what you feel. I don't care what you think right now. There's glory coming through it. I'm reminded of how David called for his epoch when they spoke to stone of him. He went and got into the presence of God. Sometime it's time, not even sometime, it's time for us to reevaluate our time with God. He's going to show us. He's going to direct us. He's going to enlighten us. He's going to reveal what he's doing. But we got to spend time. May my life 
prove that the God is good, that God is good. May my, my struggles prove that God is good. May my issues prove that God is good. May my circumstances prove that God is good. After Job prayed, because God rebuked, he, he gave him a, a, a reality check. And then after he gave him a reality check, then God rebuked his friends. God rebuked his friends. Sometimes God will use you to rebuke your friends. Now, it's up to them to listen or not. But as long as you obey God, he's going to bless you for doing the obedience. God rebuked his friends and told his friends, he said, you talked against me. You did not speak well of me. You didn't speak well like Job did. You didn't do everything that Job did. You, didn't, you tried to deter him. You tried to distract him. A few weeks ago, I was in prayer, and the Lord said to me, he said, Royce, shut out the noise. He said, shut out all noise. Shut out all distractions. Shut out your fear of yourself. Shut out your fear of doing well. Shut out your fear of being healed. Sometimes we fear the, the healing process. He said to me, he said, shut out the noise. So when God rebuked him, it came to me. The Lord spoke to me. He said, they were trying to distract him. Just as Nehemiah, when he was on the wall, and they had called the meeting to bring him off the wall. And Nehemiah said, no, I can't come down because I'm doing a good thing. So I cannot be distracted. Sometimes we have to dismiss the distraction. Yeah. Have a conversation and say, listen, I love you. You good people, but you ain't good for me right now. Maybe we'll come back in a couple of weeks, a couple of years. But I need to get what I need from God at this season in my life, at this juncture of my life. And then, then we can revisit this. Ain't that what they say in the office? Let's circle back around. Let's circle back around, and, and if the Lord is telling me I still can't, then God bless you, bid you well. So then he said to the friends, he said, now you go and you sacrifice and let Job pray for you. Because I'm not going, if he prays, I'm not going to handle you the way I should have. Sometimes your prayers are saving the ones that's been negative in your ear. Your prayers is saving lives of those that spoke damnation over you, that gossiped about you. Your prayers are keeping them. Your prayers. Lord, I don't like them. They, I know what they're doing, but Lord, just help me. You know, bless them, fix them, change, you know, change, change them. Lord, they, they made me mad, Lord, but just do it. I want to get them back, Lord, but just do it. I want to hurt. I want to. I want to make a call. I need the what y'all do the Vaseline and the sneakers and the all that good stuff. I want that. But your prayers. You know how powerful your prayers are. My God, today. You know how powerful we are in prayer. This is what Job, what God was trying to show Job all along. You still have power even though you're going through. Because look at what happened. He messed around and told Job to pray. And then when he prayed, God restored everything double. There's a season called double. Get ready to hit your house. I prophesied. There's a season called double. Double, get ready to hit the house. Because you prayed and you kept your integrity. You didn't give in, you didn't give up, you didn't walk away, you didn't throw in the towel, you had a season, you had a moment, you had a distraction, you had an issue, you had a struggle, but God brought you through and there's a season called double about to hit the house. I want to encourage you today. That's all I got. That's all I got. Job committed to his assignment. Job committed to his, for the plan of God for his life. He did not let his integrity be tricked. He did not. He had that moment. I'm going to leave this with you. I believe I said it once before. Don't exceed the expiration date. 
Sometimes when we do things at the expiration date, that causes sickness, that causes other issues. Don't exceed the expiration date. Let God give you the reality check. Ask God to restore unto me the thoughts of you. Restore your vision. I was in shower today and I said, Lord, show me your plan for my life. No, I'm not going to understand the mind of you, but show me what you have in store for me. Show me everything that you want me to do. Walk, take me to the steps that you need me to go through. Give me the endurance to go through. Don't get stuck. Give me the endurance to go through. Don't get stuck in this mess. Don't get stuck in this garbage. Don't get stuck in your trouble. Don't get stuck in your trial. Don't get stuck. God, give me the strength to go through. Because you got a plan. Mm -hmm. You got a plan and I got to fulfill it. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor pestilence, nor power, nor the things the present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creation shall separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. All he wants us to do today is hear him. He going to remind us, I promise you. He going to remind us. And he's going to bring glory. And then double, triple, and whatever else is needed is going to be restored. This is just a process. This is just a journey. This is just a part of life. I had to learn it after all these years of these big old age that I am right now. I had to learn that it's a part of life. It's a part of my journey. It's a part of the blueprint. It's a part of the plan that God has for me. I already know how it's going to end. I'm going to win. According to scripture, we going to win. He just need to get some glory out of you. Let's stand, let's pray. Let's stand, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Hush up, John. Let's pray. I hope I encourage somebody today to keep going. Keep going. Keep going. I don't care how hard this looks. I don't care what you feel at the moment. I don't care what you're going through at the second. Keep going. He got a plan. That's my soul. God, I thank you for the plan that you have for us. He has a plan, and it don't make sense. It don't. It don't. It don't. Because I don't understand everything. It doesn't. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense a lot of things. It doesn't make sense. It feels unfair, but he has a plan. And he's promised to good to make good on his word. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man. He's going to make good on his word. Job kept trusting. Even in conversation. Even in relationship. Even in a doubting a moment, a season of doubt. Even in a, in a, in a, in a doubt in his own home. Even in death in his own home. Losing his finances. He kept trusting he kept his integrity. God is having a conversation with us daily. And he's saying, I know they're not going to leave me. I have faith in them. I put too much in them for them to walk away from me. I imparted too much into them. They have too much to offer this world and this nation to walk away. I, 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 I got them in my hand. You can't kill them. They're not going to die here. So I just want you to know that. I don't care what you think you're doing. They're not dying because you can't kill them. I have the final say. Father, today, we pray that you would encourage us, strengthen us even the more. Help us to understand that you have a plan. And even in your daily conversations with Satan about us, it's all good stuff. Because we know that it's going to work out on our behalf. God, encourage your people today. Encourage the hearts of your people. Give us the endurance to continue to go further. No matter how hard it may feel and how hard it may look at this very moment in life, give us the strength to take the journey at its head. And we're going forward. We won't get stuck. Come on. Say, we're going forward. 
Come on, say, I'm going forward. Come on, open your mouth and declare that you're going forward. Father, if there's anyone that needs to be saved on today, Father, we ask that you would do. You already know. Make their hearts ready to receive from you, oh God. If there's any healing that needs to take place. God, there is nothing too hard for you. We stand firm on the promises of God, knowing that you are a God that can do all things but fail. God, bless our leader. Bless our church. God, help us to not give up. Lord, help us to not give in. Lord, help us to not walk away. In Jesus' name we pray. We say thank God. And amen. Open your mouths and let's give the Lord a praise. Come on, open your mouth for power. Open your mouth for double. It's getting ready to hit your house. Come on, open your mouth for manifestation. The glory of God. Come on, open your mouth. The glory of God is getting ready to hit our house. Come on, open. Let's tell him thank you. Come on, let's tell him thank you. Come on, let's tell him thank you. Open your mouth, clap your hands, and tell the Lord, thank you. Right where you stand, where you stand, just give the Lord some praise. Amen. We want to be a blessing to the man of God. Amen. Our deacons are coming at this time. Come on. Our deacons are coming at this time. We want to sow into the man of God's life, amen, and be a blessing to him, amen. Whatever you have to give, give out of, the, out of your substance and out of your heart, willfully and liberally, as we be a blessing to this man of God. And while you're doing that, Sister Barbara is coming. At, is, uh, I don't know if we're, amen. Sister Barbara's coming at this time. I believe we've ended our live, amen. Is our live ended yet? We're still live. Amen. 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 We're going to dismiss. Amen. Elder Drayton. Come on up, Elder Drayton. Amen. Amen. Come on, Elder Drayton. Let's give Elder Drayton a hand. Amen. One of our faithful elders will be dismissing us. We ask everyone to please stand. Amen. God, take us from this place, but not from your presence, oh God. Give us traveling mercy, oh God. And when we get home, let everything be well, oh God. We thank you for the word, oh God. We thank you for this service. We thank you for what you're getting ready to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.